Section 5.2, titled Properties of Quadratic Functions in Standard Form, what we're going to do is look at how can we graph quadratic functions in standard form uh, versus what we had done in the last section, which was vertex form. So we'll have to look at how can we find the vertex. We'll look at the line of symmetry. Does it open up or down? We'll also talk a little bit about uh, is a quadratic function going to have a minimum or maximum value? Um, and we'll also touch upon the domain and range of quadratic function as well. Standard form or general form of a quadratic function looks like this. f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Um, we already know what the graph of a quadratic function looks like, so I'm just going to th throw one on here. Oh, something like that. Whatever. Um, the vertex is of this form. Using the a's and b's up above, it is negative b divided by 2a comma f of negative b divided by 2a. The axis of symmetry is always the equation x equals negative b divided by 2a. And the y-intercept is the point 0, comma, c. So all this information can be found from the coefficients or the numbers in the function, which is quite convenient for us. In this first example, it says determine the direction of opening, axis of symmetry, vertex, y-intercept, and then graph the function. Okay, so first of all, the direction of opening, this graph, opens down. I know that it opens down because it has a negative in front of the x squared. Okay? If that negative wasn't there, then it would open up. Okay? The axis of symmetry, we're going to do the equation x equals negative b divided by 2a. Well, in this function, here's my b, Here's my a, so it's going to be positive 2 divided by 2 times negative 1, which is negative 1. Okay. If you like, you can even go ahead and put that axis of symmetry on your graph, but if you do, just make it kind of a real faint dotted line, like that. Okay, next we're going to find our vertex. Well, the x value of the vertex just so happens to be the line of symmetry point. Okay, and they're one and the same. Um, the y value of the vertex, to find this y value, what we have to do is take the x value of the vertex and simply substitute it in for the x's up above. So it would work out negative, negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 minus 8. So that becomes negative 1 plus 2 minus 8, which is 1 minus 8. So I get negative 7. Okay. And finally, we're asked for the y-intercept. The y-intercept should be the point 0, comma, negative 8. Okay, armed with all that information, we should be ready to draw a graph of this. We're going to start at negative 1, negative 7. Now, really, from here, we don't need anything else. Now, we need to know that it goes down, and then we just need our squaring pattern. 1 squares to 1. 2 squares to 4. That's even a little bit off the graph. So that's as far as I'm going to graph right there. There's the graph of this quadratic function. This one has all the same directions as the previous problem. Uh, I begin with the direction of opening. This one opens up. Opens up because the x squared is positive 2x squared. 
Okay, next I'm going to find the line of symmetry. Use x equals negative b divided by 2a. Here's the b. Here's the a. So we want negative 4 divided by 2 times 2. That's negative 1. Purely coincidence that it's the same line of symmetry from the last example. That will not always be negative 1. It just has happened. Okay. Now we want the vertex point. So the vertex will have its x as negative 1 because that was our line of symmetry. And the y value, I'm going to plug it in. 2 times negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 minus 2. That becomes 2 minus 4 minus 2 which is a negative 4. Okay. And lastly, we can state the y-intercept. It should be 0, comma, negative 2. Okay, sketching the graph, we're going to start at negative 1, negative 4. This graph goes up. Notice the 2 in front of the x squared means that it's going to stretch times 2 vertically. So instead of going 1, 1, I'm going to take this distance of 1 and double it. Instead of going 2, 4, I'm going to take that distance of 4 and I'm going to double it up to 8. And instead of going 3, 9 to right here, I'd have to double 9 to 18, which is going to be off the graph. So I'm just going to stop with these five points. And there's our graph. In these last two examples, the directions change just a little bit. Directions ask to determine the minimum or maximum value of the function, graph the function, state the domain and range. So we're going to begin with the graph. And for the graph, I need the vertex. Okay. So the vertex point, the x value is the negative b divided by 2a formula. Okay, so for this particular problem, that will be negative 3 divided by 2 times negative 1, so 3 halves. The y value, I had to take 3 halves and plug it in for the, all the x's. Okay, that looks like fun. You get negative 9 over 4 plus 9 over 2 minus 2 over 1. So that's negative 9 over 4 plus 18 over 4 minus 8 over 4. And if I add those together, it looks like 1 fourth. Okay. So, this graph is going to start at 3 halves, comma, 1 fourth. So, 3 halves, 1 fourth. It kind of starts right there. Now it goes down, so I would go 1 squares to 1. I would go 2 squares to 4. I think that's going to be about enough to get the idea. The graph kind of looks like this. Okay, it says determine minimum or maximum value. Um, so does this graph have a highest point or does it have a lowest point? Well, since it continues to arrow down forever, it does not have a lowest point. But it does have a highest point right up here. The vertex is its highest point. So this graph has a maximum 
value of one fourth. And the maximum value just so happens to be the highest point that the graph goes to on the y-axis, and that just happens to be the vertex y-coordinate. That would always be the case. Okay. Now we're also asked to find the domain and the range. Well, the domain... Uh, domain are x values. Now this graph, as it continues to go down, it's going to keep going to the left. And as it continues to go down, it's going to keep going to the right. And it's never going to stop going left and right. The domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. That will always be the domain for every single quadratic function without fail. Okay, so don't forget it. That's always the domain. The range are the y values. Okay, now here the y, the range will change for each graph. Here the y values, um, well this graph goes down forever. It never stops going down. Okay, so its lowest value is negative infinity. The highest y value would be the maximum y value, and there is a maximum value. It stops going up at one-fourth. Square bracket on the one-fourth because it's a real number, and the graph can equal goes up to one-fourth. 